Good morning. It's Friday, July 26th. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Suffolk police are accused of withholding an internal affairs report in the alleged beating of a suspect. Ken Bufa has a story you'll see only in Newsday. This is body cam footage of the alleged attack on Christopher Cruz back in 2021. Cruz's attorney says the video shows several Suffolk police officers assaulting the handcuffed Long Beach man who was accused of stealing a car. Three of the five charges against Cruz were dropped. The only one of the officers involved faced criminal charges, but those charges were dropped too. Cruz's attorney filed a federal lawsuit in 2022 against the county, alleging Cruz was targeted because he is Hispanic and that police violated his civil rights. Now, after an anonymous tip, Cruz's attorney is making a new accusation. We were entitled to have that documentation. The tip came in the form of an envelope. Inside was an internal affairs report which detailed 19 substantiated violations by officers involved in the incident, which Cruz's attorney claimed were withheld from them during the discovery phase of the lawsuit. They were aware that this internal affairs report and all of its findings, which are just outrageous. Cruz's attorney Fred Brewington is now accusing Suffolk County of withholding crucial information throughout the legal process, including the 50-page report and more than 1,200 related documents. According to uh, Cruz's attorneys, uh, Suffolk County uh, did not uh, notify uh, the plaintiff's lawyers that they had a 50-page document uh, from an internal affairs investigation. While a judge decides whether or not to hold a hearing to figure out why these documents were withheld, Cruz's attorney argues this is a matter of police accountability. We're not playing hide and seek. This is not a child's game. People die because of this. And if police officers have done wrong, they need to be accountable. Newsday called the police department and Suffolk County, but neither would comment on this story. Ken Bufa, Newsday TV. You can read more about this case on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. A Brooklyn man is due in court today, accused in a hit-and-run crash at Eastern Suffolk BOCES. It happened in the parking lot at North Bellport School last month. Police say Joseph McLaurin hit and seriously injured two aides, then left the scene. Justin Timberlake's DWI case is back in court in the Hamptons today. The star waived his right to appear for today's virtual hearing. The 43-year-old was charged with DWI last month after police say he failed to stop at a stop sign and stay in his lane in Sag Harbor. Timberlake is currently on tour in Europe. A rare case of rabies on Long Island. Nassau health officials say a feral cat in Cedarhurst tested positive for rabies on Saturday. It's the first reported rabies case in the county in nearly a decade. They are encouraging residents to vaccinate their pets. There's a free vaccine clinic at the Hempstead Town Animal Shelter on August 24th. Long Island has the lowest percentage of bridges in poor condition in the state. Just 3% are in bad shape, according to a new report from the state comptroller. Among them, the William Floyd Parkway Bridge in Mastic Beach. Let the games begin. The 2024 Paris Olympics starts very soon. The opening ceremonies kick off at 1.30 this afternoon. Basketball star LeBron James and tennis champ Coco Gauff will lead Team USA as its flag bearers. Several Long Islanders are taking part in the international competition. Among them, Bellport's Arella Garantes competing in her first ever games, playing for the Puerto Rican women's basketball team. And Wanta's Andrew Capobianco is diving for Team USA. A final farewell at the Garden. Long Island's Piano Man has left the building. It was an emotional night as Billy Joel ended this record residency at the iconic venue. Elisa DiStefano took the train with fans headed to see the star's history-making 150th MSG show. How many times have you gone to see Billy at the Garden? 51. 51 times? Yes. <laughs> it's probably like the 10th time we're, uh, we're seeing him. About my 10th Billy Joel show. I've probably gone at least six, seven times every year. Yeah. So we're talking 60 or 70 
time. Close to, probably, yeah. I go by myself half the time, probably. I just can't get enough. I'm devastated. I'm like, in mourning that this is his last one. Like, I might start to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Sing us a song, you're the man. Long Islanders taking the main line to see the Piano Man's 150th show at Madison Square Garden. Sing us a song tonight. Every moment is going to be great because it's Billy. And I'm from Long Island. This is my 52nd show. <laughs> and for the final show of his record breaking franchise run at the world's most famous arena. Billy didn't disappoint. The crowd was all in the mood for a melody and sang along hit after hit with the same enthusiasm as so many times before. This is Madison Square Garden, right in the heart of New York City. 20,000 people every show, sold out every single one of them. That's a really momentous occasion. It kind of puts this residency in a class by itself. Fans were treated to a scenes from an Italian restaurant themed concession and fun photo ops, as well as an exhibit full of memorabilia from the decade long run. And of course, there was commemorative merch. Because this is the time to remember. We are part of history. You've given us all great memories of being here, but I think this great thing is we're actually getting to watch you live a memory because you're never going to forget this night tonight here. Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. What a night to remember. Read more about the last night's show. Just click it more below the Newsday TV video box on our homepage. Booking a flight can be a hassle, so we have an alternative for you. Adventures of Scott Vogel continue. How to describe the uniqueness of that 10 square mile Rhode Island postage stamp known as Block Island? Well, for one thing, there's the cherished tradition of ordering a Bloody Mary during the ferry ride over from Orient Point. Even before dropping anchor, the island announces itself as a destination both serene and sophisticated, a place of civility and timeless refinement where nothing ever changes. Maybe we should turn back. <laughs> okay, truth is, Block Island is full of contradictions. It's a place where nothing ever changes, and nothing ever stays the same. For one thing, it's a small town, indeed the smallest town in America's smallest state, where almost everything of importance is within walking distance of the ferry landing and still literally no one can resist riding a scooter and hitting the open road. What do all those shingle-style cottages and hydrangeas and beach roses and honeysuckle demonstrate if not a stubborn resistance to the modern world even as Mohegan Bluffs proves just how vulnerable the island is to it. Parts of the Bluffs' iconic descending staircase are closed this summer because of beach erosion, although its 200-foot tall clay cliffs are as majestic as ever. It's a place you come to pursue zen-like passions like artfully stacking stones on the beach or quietly walking a labyrinth in search of spiritual enlightenment Keep going. until someone decides to fly a drone overhead where you can eat a $23 lobster roll at a picnic table, a barbecue sandwich on the beach, and the most beloved food stuff is a warm donut served from a truck. But it's also $40 brunches with million dollar views of the sound, bars that are stately and martini-ish, dinners with Michelin level takes on everything from bouillabaisse to panna cotta. Block Island is a place where the old dance to kid rock at ballards on the beach, and the young flock to disco night at Captain Nick's where there are miles of pristine, jaw-dropping, beautiful beaches and, well, that. And it's a place that's hard for Long Islanders to get to, but also really easy. A trip to Block could require two ferries and three hours of sailing time, but during summer there's also the Sea Jet from Orient Point, a fast ferry that'll have you there in just 90 minutes. All of which is to say, now is the time to head over and bask in Block Island's contradictions, do something ridiculous, and then something serious. Something highly recommended, something highly reckless, do as the locals do, and don't. Eat with caution, eat with abandon, do... Okay, don't do that. 
or that. Oh my god, stop. But do everything else or nothing. It's all up to you. Hold it up. Only the Bloody Mary is non-negotiable. Read more about the adventures of Scott Vogel on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Newsday at the Movies, one of the biggest films of the summer, is now playing on Long Island. Life is a mystery. I don't know anything about saving world. Newsday film critic Rafer Guzman has a preview of Deadpool and Wolverine. It's the Marvel mashup fans have been waiting for, Deadpool and Wolverine. Ryan Reynolds is back as the snarky superhero Deadpool, and Hugh Jackman joins the action as the revived Wolverine from the X-Men series. Together, they'll fight Cassandra Nova, a powerful psychic played by a very intense Emma Corrin. The movie is rated a hard R, and here's what you'll get. Extreme violence, foul language, and lots of fourth wall breaking to let you in on the joke. This movie is aimed squarely at Deadpool fans, but even they might notice that the gags are repetitive and the writing isn't as sharp as usual. There's a joke about Will Smith's Oscar slap, but that feels dated. Overall, the novelty of Deadpool might be wearing off. That said, the past two Deadpool films were massive hits, and experts say this one could make $1 billion at the box office. I'm Rafer Guzman for Newsday TV. Read more about Rafer Guzman and about Deadpool and Wolverine on Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. Dining on the Sand, Elisa Di Stefano and Maria Elena Martinez have today's Feed Me TV. If a drink in your hand and your toes in the sand is your summer vibe, we've got you covered. If you want to escape the real world for a while, there's a great getaway in Sequa. Welcome to the Sunset Club at Tavern Beach. How amazing is this? They have a beach, games, and a playground. The vibe here is family mayhem, I guess, on the weekends, <laughs> if you will. In That's every very, weekend in my family. In the very best way. If you are coming to eat, the food is very good. Okay. There's a lot of fish on the menu. There's Ooh, a full raw good. bar, fried mm. soft shell crab sandwich. Look at how beautiful this is. This is a tuna poke bowl. I'm going to go right in for this one. So good. Tuna is really fresh. And if you're coming for a drink, they have cocktails on tap and the slushy selection. This is like the mm. perfect like summer yes. spread. Perfect summer perch. Yeah. You could just spend hours. Mm -hmm. We might. <laughs> but we have another spot to go to. So here we are at our next stop. We are looking at it right the channel in Point Lookout, and we are at the Bowie Bar. The Point Lookout restaurant is family friendly and family owned. Run by the Tohini family. They've been here for years. Bowie Bar itself is celebrating 25 years, and yeah. Scotty's, which is the takeaway spot, goes on the beach, is celebrating 95. That's pretty Isn't incredible. That incredible? That's incredible. Play in the water, sit out on the sand come for a drink, or enjoy a meal. On the menu, a lobster pizza. It's drizzled with a lobster cream sauce, a little bit of cheese, arugula, thin crust. I mean, I can't resist. Doesn't get better than this. These are mussels with a white, white wine garlic sauce. And this is their tuna special. It's a seared tuna over a Mediterranean orzo salad. This is one of their specials. Crab cake, bacon, grilled cheese, people. That is something. So kids love it here, but if you need a grown-up moment, you could come to the adult beach, bring your drinks down on the sand, and cheers. cheers. Enjoy the most beautiful sunset. We're very happy. Mm. Cheers and enjoy, ladies. For more on where to dine on the sand, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box.
Checking out your hyperlocal Friday forecast, plenty of sun and less humidity, and the weekend is looking great too. Here's a look outside at Atlantic Avenue Beach in Amagansett. A mix of sun and clouds right now. Checking out your day planner, we start off cooler in the 60s, but we warm up with highs in the 80s. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, slightly warmer with highs in the mid 80s. Here's a look at your seven day forecast, a gorgeous weekend ahead. Enjoy. Long Island weather is brought to you by Sun Nation Energy, helping Long Islanders save on their energy bills for over 20 years. I'm Jasmine Anderson. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.